Quantum computing is not just better computing, faster computing. It's a different kind of computing. It's predicted to solve some of the world's most fundamental problems, from inventing new drugs, to making brand new materials, and creating more precise climate models. It could solve some problems in seconds that would take current supercomputers thousands of years. The technology is in its early stages, but the effort is quickly gaining momentum. So how will quantum computing change the world? A standard computer might have billions of bits. Each one can be a one or a zero, and they're all completely separate from each other. Quantum bits, or qubits, work differently for a couple of reasons that come from quantum mechanics. Thanks, Jason, but let's not go down that rabbit hole. All you need to know is this. The theory shows that certain kinds of problems, not all, just some particularly thorny ones, are made much easier when you've got quantum computers. One of those problems is in encryption, the kinds of codes that protect your credit card details online or your messages in WhatsApp or Signal. What got people really interested in making quantum computers was the realization that they could break encryption that was supposed to be too hard to crack because regular computers couldn't crack them. That's the kind of thing that gets the attention of national governments, the ability to crack other countries' encrypted networks. As in the case of artificial intelligence, China says it intends to lead the world in quantum science and has announced plans to open its own national quantum laboratory to open in 2020. America is getting involved too. It intends to create a national quantum initiative. That's because the prize that quantum computing offers, the potential strategic or commercial advantage, is huge. Imagine if you could make minute-to-minute, real-time stock predictions based on data from every trade ever made. Or if you could simply compute the formula for a new fuel or a drug that beats a horrible disease. That's the kind of promise that quantum computing may offer. There are already quantum computers out there, but it's a bit like the situation with regular computers in the 1950s. Big, basement-sized things that required a pile of PhDs to operate, and they still weren't very powerful. Typewriter-like keyboard is the master control, setting out data and instructions on a punched tape, which in turn feeds the electronic computer. There's a huge effort to make more powerful quantum computers. This used to be the stuff of university physics departments. But you can see the potential when you see who's in the business now. It's big names like Google, Microsoft, IBM. But it's not just about when one day, one company or one lab invents this one computer. It's going to be a bunch of small advances towards the kind that's commercially available, reliable, and can really solve some of these big problems. Problems that once took the human mind seven years to solve. Here's the thing. When we talk about quantum computing, people tend to think of all-singing, all-powerful machine that can run any kind of program, what's called a universal computer. That's still a distant prospect. But in the meantime, there will be smaller machines, more specific purpose, less general purpose. These things are incredibly hard to run. They're held at temperatures lower than that of deep space in very, very controlled laboratory environments. Even if you could just pick one up off the shelf, you wouldn't. Yes, they're incredibly powerful for some kinds of problems, but they're not going to replace the kind of computer on your desk or in your phone. You don't need quantum powers to edit photos or send emails. In fact, what will probably happen is that a few companies have the best computers, and you can use them on a kind of timeshare basis in the cloud. Or you send off your gnarly quantum problem and just get an answer back. But the kinds of problems that we'll be able to pose, the kinds of answers we'll be able to get, are absolutely unthinkable now. And that's what has governments, industry giants, and plucky startups in on the race.